And now for the first official one-hour Lavender Hill from KZUM Lincoln, KZUM HD 89.3 on the FM dial, online at www.kzum.org. listening to KZUM Lincoln and KZUM HD, your community radio station. Broadcast of this program is made possible by the members of KZUM. Member support is critical to the success of the station. For more information on membership, call 402-474-5086. KZUM welcomes comments or suggestions from our listeners. If you would like to share your thoughts with us, Call the station during business hours at 402-474-5086, visit kzum.org, or write to us at kzum-fm at 3534 South 48th Street, Suite 6, 68506. Far from the city, where the Lorax roams free, is the home of a magical truffle of trees. In a place you will love with things you'll adore us, it's a magical spot. We call it the forest. Everyone here needs the trees. And who are you? I'm the Lorax. Guardian of the forest. The forest is there for you to explore. So come once to see it, then come back lots more. Just like hearing you say it. Visit discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. Hey there, KZoomies. This is Mike Carlin, and I'm the host of Group W Blues right here on KZUM HD, the coolest radio station in the world. I play blues and boogie from 3 to 6 on Tuesday afternoons with a little swing, a little zydeco, and maybe even a little surf rock thrown in for the heck of it. You know, the kind of music that anyone who has ever found themselves sitting on the Group W bench can relate to. That's Group W Blues, Tuesday afternoons from 3 to 6. Nobody else understands 
Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Lavender Hill. Yes, our first official one-hour Lavender Hill here on KZUM. Yes, we've done an hour before. Yes, it but was that a was special edition. Music. Yeah, but n n well, no, we did an hour special last year about this time. And we also did the hour of blues music. Yes, so <laughs> blues uh, with a pink blush. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's Lavender blush. <laughs> Whichever. Yeah, yes. It was uh, music. Mm -hmm. uh, before we get started, I wanted to tell you that that was uh, Dominic Morgan that we just heard, and the song was Right Through Me. And uh, Dominic is a somewhat of a local artist. CD was a thin line between love and hate. I was waiting for it to pop up on my screen there. But uh, Dominic was uh, one of the headliners for Heartland Pride last year. And a little bit later on, we're going to hear from one of the performers that was at Star City Pride this year. So, yeah, we get to play a little bit more music for you, but we're also going to be sharing lots of news and views and some opinions and now and again some interviews. Uh, we've yep. got some lined up for next month already, just hammering out the details there. And you have something lined up if you've got it ready. Oh, yep. Okay. Not exactly local, but it's nearby. A school in a high school in Iowa was going to do a production of the Laramie Project. They're not. The well, they're not on campus. Yeah, because the uh, administrators decided it was too adult and mature. Even though it's about, for those of you who don't remember what the Laramie Project is about, it's a play about Matthew Shepard's murder. So, yeah, I could uh, kind of understand where some people might consider it to be a little adult, but it is a high school. Yes, and high school performances seem to have no problem with Macbeth, which mm. features murder. Lots of it. <laughs> or lots of other Shakespearean plays which feature murder mm -hmm. <laughs> and adultery and um, other adult yes. themes, but... Eh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the I whole sex, drugs, and all that, you know, sex, drugs, and murder from the past, ancient past, if you will, not really ancient when we're talking about Shakespeare, seems to be fine. But when it's, you know, less than 20 years ago? Mm -hmm. But, you know, perhaps these that's a little things do close to home in the Midwest because, well, that happened in Laramie, Wyoming, and this play was going to be in Iowa. But they are still doing it. They're just not going to be doing it on the high school campus. They're going to be doing it at another venue, mm -hmm. which, uh, it provided they get all of the support, there's a. Uh, I believe it's an Indiegogo campaign for that. I'll make sure I've got that posted to our Facebook page, Lavender Hill 89.3. Now to get really local. Okay, and he didn't tell me anything about this, so this is going <laughs> to be interesting. Yes, there was a letter to the editor in this morning's Lincoln Journal Star um, called Pick and Choose. I won't name the person because, well, you can just look it up yourself. Mm -hmm. But the, it's about uh, an earlier article. It's a response to it. Uh, uh, Reverends Jim Keck and Stephen Griffith cautioned readers of Amber Dees Parker's new children's book. You know, the book for children shall lead them July 20th. You know, that was the that's the book we've talked about on the show. A where, little bit. Yeah. You know, that's you pray you pray for the sadly deluded home um, same sex male couple that they won't harm their ch their son. Yeah, this is a children's book, mind you. Yeah. Uh, written by a uh, Lincoln-born, now Omaha citizen, uh, whose name escapes me at the moment. But she was in Lincoln last weekend doing a uh, book signing, book signing, meet and greet, reading type thing at a uh, big box yeah. bookstore. Yeah, South Point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, anyway, the article, the letter to the editor talks about how you really shouldn't, you know, that everyone, especially liberals, oddly enough. Um, cherry picks Bible passages, you know, what to support, what not to support. Um, but the really interesting part in the realm of thank you for not really helping mm -hmm. is the last paragraph, which I will read in its entirety. 
It's a long paragraph. Griffith commends all faithful and committed monogamous relationships, stretching traditional marriage just a bit to include same-sex covenantal unions. Here, however, he overlooks an inclusive perspective toward bisexual people whose orientation logically transcends monogamy. Assuming his comment is more principle than tactic, Griffith will have to consider his reconsider his narrow monogamism. Not only does it violate the LGBT construct he supports, it invites perceptions of some form of phobia or bigotry from those on the true cutting edge. Okay, now why do I say this is not really helpful? First off, your bisexual means you're potentially attracted to members of either gender, as similar to pansexual who's attracted to everyone regardless, potentially attracted to anyone regardless of that person's expressed gender. And then you have the asexual who's not attracted to other genders, period. Mm -hmm. And the monosexual who's only attracted to themselves, but yeah, that's <laughs> another story. <laughs> um, Bisexual, a bisexual can be in a committed monogamous relationship. I know many bisexuals who are in committed monogamous relationships and have been for years. Yeah. So this, like I said, not really helpful to say that bisexuals can't be monogamous or committed. Mm -hmm. uh, and, they can, and I've also known bisexuals who are in committed long-term relationships with members of both sexes. Mm, yes, yes. A, a polyamorous relationship. We actually have a local listener who uh, her and her partners tune in as often as they can, and they've been together for a number of years. Yeah. So, yeah, like I said, not really yeah. helpful, but at least it's better than in a you know condemnation and put down, etc. Of course, it's also interesting to note that a lot of uh, sociological research and anthropological research it shows that the human race is not monogamous by nature anyways. But that's another story, too. Yeah. <laughs> and who knows, maybe we'll get someone on at some point to we can have that nice discussion. Yeah, that would be a rather interesting conversation. And we have, let's see, we've got so many universities in town, we should be able to come up with a whole panel. Yeah, we could <laughs> potentially. Whoa, oh, wow. That might actually have to be a uh, KZUM Lavender Hill uh, event at one of those campuses, <laughs> which could be interesting. Yes. Anybody listening who wants to help out with something like that? Oh, hello, Pat. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. Okay, well, what else? Oh, you've got something else that's kind of local and celebrity at the same time there. Yes. Perhaps you've heard of Larry the Cable Guy. Mm, native of Ashland, Nebraska. Yep. Well, um, he's weighed in on the whole... Um, you know, same-sex relationship such business, and his, well, to put it bluntly, mind your own business. Yeah. He would have probably say it a little more colorfully, but uh, we can't use that line. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's quite <laughs> all right. This is <laughs> off of, uh, is this QWERTY.com? Yeah, QWERTY. Yeah, QWERTY. Pardon me. QWERTY, or QWERTY. I don't know how to yeah. pronounce it. Anyways, that one. Uh-huh. Yes. Um, he was basically doing this as a kind of a response to things with Paula Dean, George Zimmerman, um, Adam Carolla, and, you know that you know not everyone who's blue collar is or redneck is opposed to people who are in the pink. Yeah, I was going to say uh, I, I come from a family where I speak redneck, white trash, and trailer park fluently. And yes, they are three different dialects. Yes, they are. <laughs> Uh, yeah, okay. And then one other little thing. Mm -hmm. This is from The Advocate. Oh, w we made The Advocate? No, we didn't. Well, not us, us, but Some Nebraska well, no, or something. Well, in the actually, Midwest. the whole country made The Advocate in this okay. case. It's an article about the most LGBT-friendly hospitals in the nation. Mm. And Nebraska has three. Oh, really? Yes. Which uh, ones? Nebraska Medical Center in Omaha. That makes sense. The UNMC Physicians Hospital in Omaha. Again, makes sense. And the VA Omaha, Nebraska, Western Iowa Healthcare System. I'm confused on that one, and I'm uh, eventually going to be arranging to have a disabled veteran who has spent time at the Omaha, Iowa VA, as well as uh, elsewhere in the United States, who is probably going to differ a little bit with that. Well, this we are talking. Advocate, which is based, which isn't exactly based locally, so mm -hmm. you know, local now, mileage may vary. Perhaps compared to other 
VA facilities, it is a lot more friendly. I really don't know. I would have to, uh, you know, talk with that particular friend who's been having some wonderful issues, but I'm not going to go into those without her here so she can clarify them, but... Yeah. Hello. <laughs> I know Hello. you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we are actually approaching about the time to have a piece of music, aren't we? <gasps> oh, yes, 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 yes. yes. Ooh, yes. We're, we're trying out a, a new format with this one hour where we're going to have some local talk. We're going to have some music. We're going to have some national talk. We're going to have some more stuff. Or blah, to blah, blah. put it another way, we're going to be talking and giving you musical breaks from us going yap, 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 yap. Yeah. Yap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Make sure you get your buttons hit. So okay. who who do we got lined up for us? Um, well, it's a little. It's so, it's a song near and dear to many a gay person's heart. Mixed in with the movie it comes from, in less than seven minutes. Oh, gay. Pentatonics helped out on this little thing. I'll just let you listen and oh enjoy mm -hmm. or not. Depending on how you much like you like the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> Got a nice ring to 
should have all that power. The clock's ticking, I just count the hours. Stop tripping, I'm tripping off the power. 21st century schizoid man. And that was The Wizard of Oz featuring Pentatonix. Yes, the entire story in under seven minutes. Yes. And by the way, you can find it on iTunes or YouTube if you want to watch it, because it's a video as well as a song, Mm -hmm. medley. And Oz is spelled A-H-H-H-S. Yeah. Little little different there. Yep. But Yeah, that was actually very good. Thank you for bringing that in today. You know, you should find some amazing things out there in the world. Mm-hmm. Just go prowling around on the interwebs and or sometimes local stores, and sometimes it's really frightening stuff, isn't it? Yeah, and sometimes you get responses, and sometimes you don't. Yeah. I've been trying to find some... Well, there's an artist I'm trying to get, but yeah, yeah, whatever. Mm. Okay. okay, yeah. Anyway, mm. that's neither here nor there. we got many, many other things to yes. talk about. Where are we going next? Merit. Sort of. Ohio. Ohio. Okay. Ohio. Ohio. What's going on? Well, it depends. You know, a federal judge ordered Ohio to recognize a gay couple's marriage. Yeah, I talked about this last week. You know, mm-hmm. the gentleman who's dying. Yeah. And an interesting follow up the Attorney General of Ohio is fighting the judge's order. Okay. Why? Well, okay, I know why, but okay. why? This is Attorney General Mike DeWine is trying to overturn the judge's order that Ohio recognized the marriage between John Arthur, who is terminally ill and nearing the end of his life, and the husband, Jane Obergefell. Um, while Judge Timothy Black's decision was limited to this one case, um, it does set a precedent for forcing the recognition of same-sex marriages not only in Ohio, but the rest of the country. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and what this is, is the couple got married in one of the states that does recognize same-sex marriage. What state was it, does it say? Was it I New York remember. or California? I can't remember. Yes, no. but um, they realized with the one you know, being uh, essentially at death's door, unfortunately, that uh, in their home state of Ohio, they would still be dealing with the whole you know, inheritance tax issue and this, that, and everything else because their marriage isn't recognized by the state. And with the judge ordering that the state of Ohio recognize this particular marriage, they would be saved from that additional heartache of losing one of them. Yeah. And by the way, uh, Arthur, 
um, when he dies, he's dying from ALS, Mm -hmm. Lou Gehrig's disease, for those of you who don't know. Um, The question isn't, their question isn't about the money, the potential inheritance. Mm -hmm. It's about being buried. Yeah. Because when his, the partner dies, he wants to be buried next to his husband. Mm-hmm. But, of course, since their marriage isn't recognized, that can be denied by the By cemetery. Arthur's family, too. Yeah, and by the family. So, ay 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 Yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's a whole complicated ball of wax that a lot of people aren't even really thinking about when it comes to the marriage equality issue. It's like it's not just... The money issue, the tax issue, the inheritance issue, whatever. It's also, you know, the, if you will, the touchy-feely issues. You know, yeah. what what's going to happen when one partner dies if they're not, if their marriage isn't legally recognized? Yeah. What can the family well, do to disrupt? I mean, the family could still try even with legal marriage because families are trying that even in heterosexual marriages. Yeah, but a tradition. But unfortunately, the history is, couple, one of the member of the couple dies. That person's family comes in and takes everything, including things that were jointly purchased mm-hmm. because, well, you know, the house is in only one name and there's no automatic inheritance. So the family gets it. And they, even if there's a will, the family contests the will. And um, Yeah, it, it's, it's a mess sometimes. And that's one of the reasons why so many people are pushing the marriage equality issue. Uh, to the point where there are even some ministers who have looked at their churches and said, uh, we're leaving. If you're going to support this issue, we're leaving. If you're going to deny this issue, we're leaving. So it's on both sides of it. And I'm referring in uh, particular to uh, several retired ministers of the, uh, was it the Lutheran Church or the Methodist Church? Just had it a moment ago and it disappeared. Mm. But, um, yeah, that's uh, becoming a bit of an issue with some of the retired ministers, uh, Methodist, yes, uh, according to an article from the LGBTQNation.com, the online uh, source of information for most of the states. There's, uh, they have uh, staff writers, volunteer writers, basically. Our own uh, local Chris Dyer was a writer for them, and I believe still is when he was in D.C. He's back in Lincoln mm-hmm. now. Yes, and then we have Senator Ted Cruz, um, beating the tired drum that hopefully will break that gay marriage will lead to some slippery slope. In his case, anti-Christian hate speech laws. Um, as we, as has been said by many people, um, David Gerald, for example, um, you know, all we want you is to stop stepping on our neck. Mm-hmm. And no, I'm not going to give him a more of a, any more of a platform as views, even though I do have a short video I could play. <laughs> I would rather play something a little bit more inter- talk about a something a little bit more interesting um, that relates to what we've been talking about. Mm-hmm. New York, um, since mar- the same-sex marriage is going is now legitimately recognized in New York, si- the state, they are going to refund estate taxes that were overpa- that were overpaid because of doma so in other words i'm saying that kind of poorly so in other words couples that were together you know they had to pay a certain amount of state tax because the marriage wasn't recognized but now that the marriages are recognized they're going to retroactively acknowledge that those marriages were legitimate and so estate taxes are going to be refunded to the surviving partner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a nice little clarifier there, too. Yeah, uh, the headline uh, from Pink News just uh, reads, New York to refund estate tax paid by same-sex spouses under DOMA. So with the uh, overturning of Section 3 of the Defense of Marriage Act, uh, the state of New York is going to be refunding some of those taxes, which is a good thing. Yes. I mean, it just... Because they were married, but eh, the complications 
just keep mm-hmm. getting more. Yes, just keep getting more and more and more. And well, we're not even going to talk about who's running for mayor of New York City and some of his stances on things. That we may have an extra half hour now every week, but we still don't have enough time to cover everything. So we just we we have to pick and choose, as it were. Uh, sorry for the little pun there on uh, the editorial from today's Lincoln Journal Star. Yep. But um, yeah. and then another senator has joined the call to rep- to pass the Respect for Marriage Act. Mm-hmm. Um, this is um, Delaware Senator Chris Coons uh, is backing the, this res- the Respect for Marriage Act, which goes a little bit further than just you know, it r- would wipe out all of DOMA, not just the parts that the sen- uh, the Supreme Court has overturned. Mm-hmm. And it would call for, you know, national recognition, you know, at the federal level of same-sex marriages. Mm, which would make it even easier for the remaining 37 states to approve same-sex marriage. And that, that number mm-hmm. of states that are remaining is, getting, is going to probably be getting much smaller over the course of the next couple of years. We'll have to see what happens after uh, the 2014 election season. But there's lots of changes in the uh, offing for those 37 states. And one of these days, maybe it'll be Nebraska that'll be paying attention and going, oh, hey, our uh, our own DOMA law is, well, frankly, I'm going to put it this way without swearing, it's stupid. But that's just because yes, of the literal interpretation of it. Uh, but um, Senator Kuhn's support brings the number of senators openly co-sponsoring it to 42 with another 13 pledging that they'll vote for it mm-hmm. which of course means that they may not uh, yeah. but so they're n- but that's not enough of course to make a clear senatorial majority they need 52 they're getting there they're getting mm-hmm. there though yep so you know one step at a time mm-hmm. so Maybe if you'd like to, you could write s- letters to our state senators, you know, the s- senators from Nebraska, or if you happen to be listening to us from, oh, any other state. Yeah, any other state. state write to your senators and get them to mm-hmm. support right. if they're not Probably. already. <laughs> yeah, there's there's uh, campaigns going on, internet-based campaigns going on where you can actually tweet your senator or representative on issues and they have special days for that with uh, some of the certain issues follow those on uh, the internet and all that there's actually one coming up which I'll be sharing that on our Facebook page uh, because it does actually include one of our own uh, state politicians but we need to do our station requirements here for you and when we come back we'll have more news and information and from music yes and music <laughs> lo- more local music too all right here we go with those station requirements you're listening to kzum lincoln and kzum hd where we enjoy the freedom of running barefoot through the grass only to discover they have a dog August 1st will mark what would have been Jerry Garcia's 71st birthday, and KZUM is again celebrating with the 2013 Jerry Garcia Birthday Bash, featuring the Jerry Pranksters, paying tribute to the music of Garcia and the Grateful Dead on Saturday, August 3rd at the Bourbon Theater. Doors open at 7 and the show starts at 8 with opening bluegrass from the Dirty River Ramblers. Your $6 cover, or 5 if you're a sound backer, will directly support KZUM. More information about this fundraiser is available at kzum.org. Need to get away from the hustle and bustle of city life for a few hours? Thanks to some forward-thinking people half a century ago, the citizens of Lincoln have Wilderness Park where we can go to reconnect with nature, get a little exercise, and recharge our mental batteries. The Wilderness Park Trail System was one of only nine national recreation trails in the state. With separate trails for hikers, bikers, and horseback riders, you can quickly escape the traffic and noise of the city. The Friends of Wilderness Park is a nonprofit organization dedicated to the protection and preservation of Wilderness Park. Thinking globally and acting locally, the Friends of Wilderness Park help maintain the trail system and work with government organizations to promote the long-term sustainability of Wilderness Park. To find out more about the Friends of Wilderness Park or to find out how to become a member, 
Go to www.friendsofwildernesspark.net or check us out on Facebook. Enjoy music by For and About Women? Well, if you do, stay tuned at noon for two hours of women's music on The Women's Show. Deb Anderson brings you over 30 years of radio and music experience for your listening enjoyment here on KZUM HD 89.3 on the FM dial. And that was Mary Lambert doing a interesting song called She Keeps Me Warm. Some of you may b- who are listening to it may have gone, huh, that sounds familiar. Where have I heard that before? You've heard it from Macklemore. Um, she, Mary Lambert sang part of that song as a chorus to Macklemore's same-sex love anthem. And they decided to spin it into its own full song. Mm. Cool. Yep. 
just gets interesting that way. How a little bit of fun here with music. Yep. Uh, that's cool. Yeah. Yep. And it's just a really good song. Mm -hmm. That it is. Yep. All right. So okay, now some not so good stuff. Oh, wha what's not so good stuff? What? Where are we going now? Africa. Well, there's lots of things, good and bad, coming from Africa. Yep. So where are we going? Well, um, this is a very sad and depressing one. Mm -hmm. um, this is well, it's this is not. Um, this isn't actually Africa. This is Asia. Sorry. Okay. Um, there are five children in India. Okay. Who um, age seven to seventeen, who parents died recently from complications to from AIDS. Mm -hmm. The villagers have banded together to force those five children out of the village and have made them live in the graveyard. Ew. That's yeah. about all I can say to that one is ew. Yeah. What, so the, they, the village uh, is automatically assuming that all five children are HIV positive and they don't want them anywhere near themselves? Yeah. You know, in and near them or their children, lest mm. they contaminate the entire village with the evil disease and, you know, and harm everyone. Mm. Uh, they, there are people in India trying to fight this um, in the very least, trying to get money together so that blood samples can be sent in to a health authority so that the children can be tested and either declared clean or get the medical treatments they need. Uh, the sad thing is that this is not just confined to India. It's happening all over the world where there's poverty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that leads us to Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Mm, yes, who has been quoted as saying in multiple newspapers and uh, television news broadcasts, um, something to the effect of, I'd rather go to hell than a homophobic heaven. Yeah. Well, actually, I'd rather go to hell than worship a homophobic god. But mm. Well, one, the Six headline I have here from the Washington Times says, I'd pick hell over an anti-gay heaven. Yeah. South Africa's iconic and now retired Archbishop Desmond <laughs> Tutu said on Friday that if he had to pick, he'd go to hell before heading to a heaven that condemned homosexuality yeah. as sin. Let's, we might as well quote his exact words. Okay. I would refuse to go to a homophobic heaven. No, I would say sorry. I mean, I would much rather go to the other place. I would not worship a god who is homophobic, and that is how deeply I feel about this. He said, condemning the use of religious justification for anti-gay prejudice. I am passionate about this campaign as I was ever about apartheid. For me, it is at the same level. Thank you, Archbishop Tutu. Yeah, that really says a lot right there. That's wow. Know, a voice from, you know, basically a little bit of a voice from the past because apartheid was all of the news in the uh, 80s. And here he is, you know, speaking up uh, in uh, support of the LGBT community worldwide. Yep. Not just in his home base, but. Yeah, worldwide. Yep. Yeah. Now, it's slightly not so happy. Well, whoa, far from happy uh, yeah. in Africa, in Zimbabwe. Uh, yeah. Zimbabwean President Robert Mugabe, uh, who we've talked about in the recent past, has uh, kind of expanded a little bit on what he's said, not just, you know, let's imprison homosexuals, but, well, I'll just quote something that he says here, and this is coming to uh, an uh, article off the Hu Huffington Post, and this is what uh, Mugabe says, if you take men and lock them in a house for five years and tell them to come up with two children and they fail to do that, then we will chop off their heads. This thing, referring to homosexuality, seeks to destroy our lineage by saying John and John should wed, Maria and Maria should wed. Obama says, if you want aid, you should accept the homosexuality practice. We will never do that. So uh, he's shooting his countrymen in the foot with well. that as well. But, uh, you know, as, an, as a citizen, he has the right to say whatever he wants to say, and I will uphold anybody's right to freedom of speech. But... Mm. We've seen from what's happened in Russia when uh, 
President Vladimir Putin has uh, made some some remarks and passed things into law. What the citizens do as a reaction to that, and uh, yeah, there there is a, a human rights campaign movement type thing, not HRC campaign, but there's a campaign going on on the internet, basically saying that Putin is responsible for all of the gay bashing and uh, yes hate crime deaths that are coming about in Russia because of the laws that he's passed. Yes. And um, they're including probably, mm, yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah, one that was videotaped. Yeah. Uh, Russian skinheads use social media to lure, capture, kidnap, and publicly torture gay teens. Um, using the Russian equivalent of Facebook, which is known as VK.com, uh, they lure un victims through personal ads when the teens show up thinking that they're going to have a date they're um, captured, bullied, and tortured, and the rec it's recorded on video. Um, and sometime, you know, sometimes these videos are broadcast live, mm -hmm. and no one, uh, and, and it, they're met with indifference or even, yeah, beat them up encouragements. Yeah, just totally <laughs> disgusting, for one, and just makes you question their humanity. Yeah. A and so this has prompted a lot of people to wonder about the Russian Winter Olympics that are coming up. Yes, the 2014 Olympic Games in mm -hmm. uh, Russia. I mean, uh, you know, because you know, if you're a gay athlete, if you're a Soji athlete and you go to Russia, you could be arrested, deported. If you are a uh, a tourist wanting to go to the games and you accidentally say or do something that reveals yourself or even says or even if you say something that is construed as pro gay you could be deported and fined uh, and deported mm -hmm. yeah um but interestingly enough um John Weir who's a figure skater and a reality TV s um star mm -hmm. he's going to um, and uh, an openly gay athlete he's going to go to the olympics he's going to compete He's going to. Say he's not necessarily going to say anything that falls under Russia's laws, mm -hmm. but he is going. He's not going to run. He's going to say, "Look, I'm here. I'm queer. Get used to me." Mm. I'm here. I'm queer. Get over it. You know, some, whichever. Yeah, that's kind of how I want to say it these days. But yeah, so it is just kind of ugh. now some other news of the bad. Then I've got some international news of the good. Mm-hmm. Um, Greece, which has fallen under the sway of certain uh, far-right nationalistic attitudes, is going to, ha and has been deliberately targeting the transgender and cross-dressing populaces, drag queens beware, uh, is going to reintroduce HIV testing at force. In other words, any person arrested for any reason will be have a blood sample taken and their um, HIV status will be determined. Is that any person arrested for any, any crime? Anybody for any crime, but especially targeting the transgender. And cross-dressing communities. Uh, yes. Mm. So, oi, 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 oi. And Haiti... Um, uh, the parliament in Haiti has been de uh, debating whether or not to recognize same-sex marriage mm -hmm. um, and just homosexuality in general. Uh, over a thousand people took to the streets uh, last Friday, not the Friday we just had, but the prior one, sometimes news is slow, um, to protest this. This crowd of over a thousand said that if the parliament dares to pass a same sex marriage law, they will burn it down. Parliament, that is, the building. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 such hate. Yeah, well, I, I th actually do find it interesting that the parliament of Haiti is considering this issue. It's like, you know, Haiti is one of those. I hate to put it this way, strange countries where what goes on there is so different than what goes on in any of the other neighboring countries. 
Uh, well, actually, there are a number of Caribbean nations mm-hmm. that aren't exactly gay friendly. Yeah, but I mean, for the government to be considering passing mm-hmm. a uh, recognition of gay marriage over and, ab- uh, and above what the uh, citizens are expecting, you know, that that you know, yeah. that's different than what the U.S. does. That's for sure. Yes, and then. Um, Another little story from New Zealand. Mm -hmm. Uh, New Zealand has a youth parliament. So what are the Kiwis up to? And a representative of New Zealand's Maori party uh, gave a speech describing gay people as being outside the circle of life, i.e. unwelcome in community. I suddenly want to play some Disney music. Yeah. This prompt, um, this particular representative... Um, Carl Waller um, d- gave this speech on the three-month anniversary of the New Zealand Parliament voting to approve same-sex marriage, railing against it, and she railed against it. Um, this prompted um, she e- e- described the vote, which was 77 to 44, in favor of recognizing same-sex marriage mm-hmm. as the government going mad. This prompted Jay Everett who is Labor Party Youth um, MP, and a number of other uh, members of the parliament, some of whom are openly gay, to walk out on her as in protest. So, you know, every w- it's uh, not just here. There it seems like every step forward, there's a step back. Yeah. I mean, w- look... Look at the UK, look at uh, England, where the Queen has endorsed same-sex marriage, but the uh, conservative leadership of the UK government was hesitant to let it pass. Mm. But yes, uh, the Queen endorsed it, so, well, I suppose that makes a lot of people happy. I mean, to the point where some of the citizens of the UK, well, people around the world actually, said that they would be happy if the new royal baby grew up to be queer. Mm. We'll see. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Now, some papa, some more positive international news. Mm. Well, Italy is considering an anti-homophobia bill. Wonderful. Yes, I mean you know it may be a bastion of Catholicism, but that doesn't mean that all Catholics agree with the papacy that homosexuality is a sinful, horrible behavior that needs to be locked in a closet. Yeah, very true, very true. Very Remember, true. the uh, Vatican City is its own country within Italy, so they're, they're not yeah, so, I mean, they're they heavily influencing the rest of the country, but not to the extent that everybody believes nowadays. Yes. And Lithuania, um, there was an interesting... Um, people in Lithuania have been battling back and forth whether or not to allow Baltic pride, that is to say a Baltic... Soji celebration, Mm -hmm. and the Supreme Administrative Court in Lithuania has ruled that, yes, they can have their pride celebration, and they've been having it yesterday and today. Wonderful. Yep. Happy pride. Yep. Um, You know, that this is their right. They can celebrate themselves and their lives, and, of course, this has prompted, you know, people to, in all this... Um, same-sex pride, you know, the soji, the you know, rainbow pride, has prompted certain straight people to go, well, why can't we have a straight pride celebration? Uh, the simple answer is, uh, when can't you? Exactly. You can walk down the street holding hands, uh, being lovey-dovey. Few people might turn away, but you know, they're not going to condemn you for it. They're mm-hmm. not going to chase you out of town for it. They're not going to threaten to not lo- um, chop off your head if you are in a relationship for five years and don't have kids. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's why there's not a straight pride. Because uh. there doesn't really seem to need to be one. Yeah. Okay. And um, here's an interesting little bit. I mean, you know, Every we really haven't. We've talked a couple of times about some beauty pageants. Mm-hmm. Well, there's an interesting pageant coming up, Mister Gay World. Yeah, I've heard of that one. Yep. Um, 
and it's very easy in the Western countries, like the, here, the United States, to find someone to find lots of corporate sponsors, so that s people that representatives can go and compete for the title of Mr. Gay World. Mm -hmm. Well, for Nolan Lewis, who was voted Mr. Gay India, it's been a lot more challenging. Not a single Indian business is willing to provide him any kind of corporate sponsorship. Well, in light of what that one village in India is doing to those five children of a uh, yeah, HIV not positive surprising. couple that died, yeah, that's not surprising at all, really. But um, but nonetheless, he is um, he's try you know with the help of lots of friends, he's going to make it to the he's going to try to make it to the you know without sponsors, so he's at a little bit of a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. But then again, maybe that's an advantage for him. It could very well be. You know, I've actually got some uh, uh, Soji friends in India. I should look in to see what they have to say about that. You know, maybe get some uh, on-the-ground type uh, viewpoints on something like that coming up in the near future. Well, real quick before we wrap up here, because we, you know, believe it or not, we're running out of time even with a full hour. <laughs> <laughs> we knew that was going to be an issue. But, hey, we can give you a little bit more of news, views, information, interviews coming up in the near future, and of course more music. I uh, wanted to let you know that um, you know uh, last month we played the uh, audio for this. Um, Navi Pillay, who is the High Commissioner for the Human Rights Initiative uh, with the uh, United Nations, uh, announced at a press conference in, um, I just lost it, Oh, I hate when I do that. Cape Town, South Africa, uh, that there is going to be even more of an effort. And why did they pick Cape Town, South Africa? Well, it's one of the most prevalent areas, you know, Africa in general, is one of the most prevalent areas for violent discrimination against the LGBT, et cetera, or SOGI communities. And she's also a native of South Africa. So she wanted to make that announcement there. So some good positive news coming on that front. But uh, if we, like I said, we're out of time. Oh. We got another piece of music for you, and it's another local group. Uh, they were one of the onstage performers at Star City Pride this year. They're called The Clincher. They've been around since about 2005. They've got three CDs out there from Omaha. They are a female-fronted heavy metal band, and uh, more importantly for this show, they're a lesbian-fronted heavy metal band. This could be very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, stay tuned for the women's show. And, of course, remember, tune in to all of the wonderful programming here on KZUM. Mm -hmm. Check out the website, uh, kzum.org, for the program guide because there's been some changes, as you've noticed, for yep. the Sunday lineup and perhaps elsewhere. Yep. See you. We'll be back next week at 11 to noon. Yes. See you then. See you then. You're beautiful
talking the blues, and so much more. This is 89.3 FM, KZUM Lincoln, and KZUM HD. Man, slow down. We'll get there. The Pagan Musings Podcast Channel is proud to present to you Lavender Hill, a special program on KZUMHD, 89.3 on the FM dial, www.kzum.org, Lincoln, Nebraska's first and only community radio station. <laughs> 